If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, January 11th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining us today in the Finise Monitor is 200 backstroke Olympic champion, Tyler Clary. He's been back in the pool after some time off to celebrate his success in London, and he joins us now from his home in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hey, Tyler, good to see you. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Jeff? Doing good. I'm sure it's... Um, been feeling pretty good these past few months and now know that you have that title of Olympic champion attached to your name. Yeah, that, that title definitely does feel good, but I'll, I'll say that after a uh, <laughs> two and a half month break, I have not been feeling good in the water until recently. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the price you pay for taking that much time off. Oh, seriously. So, you took, like, we said, like you said, you took some time off. Uh, what were you doing um, after you got back from London? Uh, I'll... More, more than anything, I was taking a mental break, but one of the things that I've been uh, really working on lately has been getting to do some uh, racing. So I got, to, I got to drive a trophy truck, I got to drive a, a pro buggy in a race out in, um, out in California, and I actually got to do uh, a three-day open wheel racing school in late, late September, so I was really excited about that. Yeah, I, I know that's kind of one, been one of your big aspirations, and I understand that that's not over yet that you still have some more um, racing experience under your belt coming up soon? Yeah, I actually uh, I got a pretty exciting phone call not too long ago. I, I got selected for the Skip Barber IndyCar Academy and they had, I guess, 200 plus applicants and they only accept 33 per year. And I was able to, to snag one of those 33 spots. So actually on the 24th, I'm flying back down to Florida to get fitted for a, a, a custom foam seat, and then I'm competing against 32 other guys for a $200,000 grand prize over three days. I'm really, really excited about it. Nervous, too. <laughs> yeah, that is really exciting. I mean, that's that's got to be up there next to, you know, wearing a gold medal in the Olympics. I mean, you're, you're going up against, you know, some guys that are probably, you know, just like you, wanting to, to have a future in race car driving. Well, that's exact. I mean, that's the cool thing about the program is it's is it's made for people like me who don't really have a whole lot of experience, but want to take a serious shot at at taking another step in racing. So I'm really excited to see what I can throw down later on this month. Well, race car driving uh, is probably a little more expensive than um, gear for swimming. I mean, you got the suit, you got all the stuff that goes with the car. I mean, how have you been preparing for all that? Well, I mean. It's one of those things where you don't really put a price on your safety. You know, auto racing is inherently more dangerous than swimming, obviously. So, you know, there are certain certain pieces of equipment that you absolutely need to have. And, um, you know, it's just one of those, it's one of those bills that you definitely don't mind paying. <laughs> well, sure, you, you're, you're definitely right. Safety is important. I understand you got a new helmet? Yeah, I, it's, it's actually right here next to me. I got a, a Ray, um, the, a Ray, GP6 RC helmet. I'm really excited about this helmet. It's super light. It's all carbon fiber, and the lens is my favorite color, blue. Yep, that is a, that is a really nice helmet there. I mean, you're talking <laughs> about carbon fiber. It kind of goes along with a lot of these the swimsuits these days. I mean, tell me how what why helmets are made out of carbon fiber. Well, the reason why is that so. People don't know this until you actually get into one of those cars, but the G-forces in some of those cars are absolutely amazing. And when you think about it, you want a helmet to be as light as possible so that you're not straining your neck while you're driving over the course of a race. Carbon fiber is probably one of the one of the lightest and strongest materials. Like having that that um, light and weight ratio uh, that you can possibly get. And the cool thing about this particular helmet, and I guess what they've had problems with in the past with carbon fiber helmets, is they they tend to shatter on impact versus with fiberglass or or plastic and to flex a little bit and this particular helmet has a different weave that the carbon fiber has and it allows it to flex just as much as the other materials do but it's lighter and stronger so it, it kind of is the best of all worlds 
Where did this uh, desire to want to be a race car driver begin? Oh man, I've, I've been around it for so long and I'm sure every other swimmer understands that, you know, when you're, when you're deep in the throes of a competitive season, you don't really have time for anything else, especially if you're going to school simultaneously. So I've never really gotten a chance to pursue it until after I went, I moved back from Michigan to California. I got to be a part of an off-road racing team as a, basically a hand around the shop and thing I didn't get to do for them was drive and my goal for after this last summer regardless of what happened was to do some kind of racing school or find some way to get some kind of seat time to see if I was any good at it and I ended up I've ended up being decent at it and I'm curious to see how far it goes well uh, more than decent in the pool um, 200 back gold medal had to be uh, a really good experience let's kind of just briefly touch on that uh, at the 150, everybody was kind of thinking you were still in the race. Take us through that final 50 meters. You're even with Ryan and Rice K area, and then you pull ahead and get to the wall first. What's tell us? T- take us through that that final 50 again. Oh man, I, when when I ever ever I have one of my best races, I, I very rarely remember a whole lot from it. It's and it sounds corny, I know, but it's like it's almost like. A dream, you know. You only remember remember certain parts of that dream, and the only couple of things I remember from that race are diving in and and looking over and realizing that you know he's Ryan was getting a little ahead of me off of the first wall, which I was expecting, and then I remember flipping at the hundred and noticing that Ryan was ahead of me again, and that was one of the scenarios that I had prepared for mentally the day before. And then at the 150, I remember looking over and actually like seeing that I was gaining on him a little bit underwater. And that really shocked me because I've never been able to do that before in my entire life. And underwater has been something I've been working on for really for a really long time and working very hard at. So that was satisfying. And then those last 15 meters, I just remember saying to myself, you know, just keep your stroke long and hold hold water as best you can because your arms are burning so bad at that point all you want to do is just stop and i i knew i was in the running for a medal um i didn't know where ryosuke was and i just i kind of saw myself getting ahead of ryan but i wasn't sure if he he would have a better touch or not so i was hugely shocked when i looked up at the scoreboard and saw first place and let alone olympic record next to my name well after before that, you were in the 200 fly final, didn't get a medal. I'm, I'm sure it's probably one of those things you were deeply disappointed about because I know you know you were really kind of one of those medal contenders. How were you able to come off the 200 fly and get ready for that 200 backstroke? I'm going to have to disagree with that, actually, because fifth place is, is the best worldwide finish I've had since 2000. 2009 and I mean the tuner fly has really never been my best event I mean I got fifth place in 2009 at world championships um, you know and then I got I had the the poor luck of getting uh, I forget how I finished in 2010 in 2011 at worlds I got second in my semifinals heat but then seven other guys in the next semifinals heat beat me so I didn't make it to finals I mean, I was just ecstatic to be in finals for the 200 fly, to be completely honest. And, and like I said, again, that fifth place is one of the best finishes I've had in three years. So in my mind, that was a successful event. And coming off of that, I knew that my backstroke was feeling a heck of a lot better in the water than my butterfly. So I knew it was only going to get better from there. Well, that's a good perspective to put on that. Especially, I mean, I guess maybe from the, our, our outsider standpoint, looking at, you know, we're predicting races and everything, we're always saying... The Americans are always going to be medal contenders, so it's it's very it's very good to hear that you thought fifth place was good, and I guess that just means that um, everything every other meet after this fourth, third, second, and first is always going to be a nice improvement. Exactly, and you know that's always what I'm going to be working towards. And interestingly enough, you know my my tuner fly, like I said, hasn't been one of my better events, but. Lately, my fly has been feeling pretty good, and I've been able to train it more than I have in the past because of my shoulders, and um, I'm looking forward to swimming that in, in the next couple of years, kind of seeing where it takes me. Well, with Michael Phelps retiring, everybody's looking at you now as a top American 200 flyer. 
Oh, you should not put that kind of pressure on anyone, man. <laughs> <laughs> just got us just stating the obvious, Tyler. Actually, interesting story. What? Uh, so the morning before finals of the two hundred backstroke, John was telling me. He, you know, we were messing around before warm up and stuff. And he goes, "So Tyler, I started my my career out as an Olympic coach with a gold medal." in the Olympic record, I like. I would like to finish it that way. It's like, thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, gl I'm glad that I, my pressure I just put on you is nothing compared to the pressure that John Urbanchik put on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you said, you got back, you're back in the water now. How was it, how were those first few workouts for you? Oh, I don't ever want to remember those. <laughs> uh, let's just say, let's just say I, I came back a little heavy and, <laughs> um, I, it took a lot of work to get the weight off, but you know, I, I had a, a good training trip down in Florida. We literally just got back from training trip yesterday and it was getting to the point where I was, I was starting to feel like myself again in the water. And I'd say on a, on an overall fitness perspective, if we call how fit I was before the Olympics a 10, I'd say I'm close to eight and a half ish. I'm almost, I'm almost where I would be. I'd be considered comfortable I would consider myself comfortable with going to a meet so I've got another week and a half to get ready for Austin and we're going to go down there and swim a couple of events and toy around with a couple of things and then go from there. Well, I would imagine uh, getting ready for world championships your competition program is pretty much going to stay the same both IMs 200 fly 200 back. Yeah and uh, I actually want to work on the freestyles a little bit more that was Something that's been a dream of mine for a really long time has been to make that that 800 free relay, and I would I would absolutely love to earn a spot on that relay and, and start contributing. Well, you're, you're back in Ann Arbor now. You're uh, going to school at the University of Michigan, finishing up your degree. Remind us again what you're studying. I'm studying computer science. <laughs> Today was actually the first day of classes. No, that's not too bad. It's, you know, you gotta gotta ease back into things. What uh, path will that take you on as a future career? Well, I mean, to be completely honest, I'd love to use my, my computer science degree as like a plan C. <laughs> you know, I wanna, I really wanna make racing my next career, and and I think that with with the right drive and and getting in contact with the right people, which interestingly enough, it's it's starting to happen. I think could really be something that, that would be viable for me as, as far as a future career, either in stock cars or in open wheel cars. And I, I really think it's possible and it's definitely something I'm going to take a shot at. So keep your eye out for that. Well, it's good to have a plan A with swimming now and plan B for race car driving and plan C for computer science. Very few people have a plan C, so it's, it's good that you have that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm hoping I don't have to get that far. So I'm hoping I'm just being an, uh, an over planner. No, nope, nothing wrong with that at all. Like I said, very few people think that far ahead. Uh, now, in addition to being an aspiring race car driver um, and a very accomplished swimmer, you're a video gamer, you're a DJer um, on the site. Is there anything else that you do we don't know about that you can squeeze into your day? Oh, I, I'm sure I could sit here and think of something, but... <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, the, the racing and, and video games and school and swimming pretty much take up all of my time now. But interestingly enough, though, one of the things I'm doing that kind of brings all of that together is I'm, I'm supposed to be working with Curse uh, Gaming Network here in the next month to build a, basically a gaming computer that will also work, work as a simulating station for this system called iRacing that, um, that a lot of the, the pros even use because they're, they're tracks and their tracks are accurate to like within the millimeter. Their company went out and did laser scans of all the tracks and their tire models are like so close to real that real drivers actually use them to stay in race shape and get used to new tracks and things like that. And I'm actually going to be making a five screen setup that basically wraps around your head and fills up your entire uh, visual area with what's going on on the track. And you can actually like, you, you feel what it was like to drive that track minus the g-forces you know the only only force feedback you're going to be getting is through the wheel but you'll still get a pretty good experience of what a track would feel like in a certain car well this sounds like you can use your plan b and c together tyler i mean you got you could be a star on the track and then you could also be a rock star behind the scenes too 
But we got to figure out whether or not I can be a star on the track first. <laughs> well, this uh, race car school is going to be definitely a first step for you, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to be successful, and all the best to you there. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you in Austin. Yep. See you there. All right. So that's Tyler Clary joining us for today's Morning Swim Show, and I hope everyone enjoys the weekend, and we'll see you back here with a new episode on Monday. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.